Hello and welcome back to the safe combination tutorial for a pipe part 6 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So now that we have made it possible to enter in either the correct or incorrect combination to the safe, we're going to go ahead and add the safe handle image to the safe puzzle screen with the indicated light on it, either lighting up green or red, depending on if the user got the combination right or wrong. So for that, we're going to create a new line underneath this background image in our safe puzzle screen. And then we're going to create an if statement. So we're going to say if combination check is equal to wrong. So if the user got the combination wrong, then we're going to add an image button of the safe handle with the red indicator light on it. So we're going to say image button auto images safe handle in red percent s dot png and the percent s is a placeholder inside of this string that is either going to be replaced with idle or hover automatically by rempy depending on if we are hovering over the image button or not and that is because we have two different versions of each safe handle image and then we're going to add a focus mask to this image button and that is because the image itself has a lot of empty space in it and we don't really want to be able to click on that empty space so for that we're going to say focus mask true like so and now we're going to add an action to this image button so for that we're going to say action and this is just going to be to play an audio file of the door being locked so for that we're going to say play and then we're going to add the file path to the audio file so we're going to say file is equal to audio locked door dot og and then we're going to add the channel so we're going to say channel is equal to sound like so and then we just got to make sure that we are applying the half size transform to this image button so that it will be half of its original size so we're going to say at half size and then we'll go ahead and do the correct variant as well so we're going to create a new line and then say elif combination check is equal to correct and then we can go ahead and copy paste this image button like so and then we're just going to change the image path to instead say green instead of red like so and for the action of this image button we're going to play a sound file just as before but we're also going to switch to another screen that's going to show the save being open so for that i'm going to go ahead and wrap this play action in a list so I'm going to add two square brackets around it, like so. And then we're going to add a show action. So we're going to add a comma after the play action, like so. And then we're going to say show. And the screen name is going to be safe opened, like so. But to make the transition between the safe puzzle screen and the safe open screen a little bit nicer, we're going to add a fade transition to it. So I'm going to add a comma after this safe open string like so and then I'm going to say transition is equal to and then fade and then we're going to add three parameters and there's going to be one one and one so that means that the fade is going to fade in for one second hold for one second and then fade out for one second and now we're going to add another variant for this safe handle image and that is going to be if the combination check variable has the value none instead and that is going to be the case whenever we have not entered in a combination so for that we can go ahead and copy paste this elif statement like so and then we're going to check if the value is instead none so we're going to say none like so and then we're going to change the image to the normal image instead so we're going to say safe handle int normal like so and in such a case we're going to do the same action as we did when the combination was wrong which is namely to play the audio file of the door being locked 
So with that, we can go ahead and copy paste this play action right here instead of these two actions, like so. So now let's go ahead and create the save opened screen. And we can go ahead and do that underneath this scene one screen. So we're going to say screen save opened. And for this, we can go ahead and add an on statement that is going to make sure that the save puzzle screen is automatically hidden whenever this screen is being shown. So for that, we're going to say on show and then action hide save puzzle like so and then we're going to create a new line and we're going to add the background image for the save open the screen so for that we're going to say image then save opened background dot png and then we're going to resize this so we're going to say at half size and now we're going to add a back button to this screen so that we can go back to the first screen from this one. So for that, we're going to say image button auto and then images back button percent s dot png. And then the action for this image button is going to be two actions. So the first one is going to be to show scene one and the second one is going to be to hide this safe opened screen. So for that, we're going to say action and then add two square brackets. And then we're going to say show scene one. And we're going to do this with a fade. So we're going to add a comma there and then say fade one, one and one, just as we had done before. And then we'll add a comma after this show action and we're going to say hide save opened like so and then we're going to align this image button so for that we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0 0.95 and 0 0.95 and then we'll resize this image button as well so we're going to say at half size so now we're going to add some content to the save and that is going to be determined by which save that we have currently unlocked. And as you may remember, we created the current save variable and that variable contains the value that represents the current save. So to add the correct content to the correct save, we're simply going to compare what that variable's value is and then add a corresponding image button as the content. So for that, we're going to create a new line and then we're going to say if current save is equal to one, so if this is the first save, then we're going to add a book as the content that the user just unlocked. So for that, we're going to say image button auto and then book percent s dot png. And then we're going to add a focus mask to this. So we're going to say focus mask true. Now for this video, we're going to add a null action to this image button. And that is just because everyone is going to want something different to happen for this specific game. So I'm not going to add anything specific to happen for this image button. So for that, I'm just going to say action, no action. But you might want the book to be added to an inventory, for example. And in such a case, you can always check out my inventory tutorial that I have on my channel if you haven't already. And once you have implemented that inventory into your game, you can go ahead and call the add to inventory function as an action to this image button and then supply the book as the parameter. And then we're just going to make sure that this image button is half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size, like so. Now, if you're planning on having more saves available to be unlocked in your game, then you're simply going to add more if statements. So for example, let's say you have a second save, then you would create a new line and then say elif current save is equal to two and then you will go ahead and add the content that goes into save two and then you would repeat this for every save that you have available in the game but in this case we're not going to add any more saves so we're simply just going to remove this and keep it like that so now before we go ahead and launch the game to see how this works like we're going to make a small correction in this save puzzle screen down here and 
with this image button that is showing the safe handle with the green indicated light indicating to the user that they can open up the safe we're going to change the audio file to play the open door file instead of the locked door file because when we are clicking on the handle in such a case the door is going to open so therefore we want to play the correct audio file for that so we're going to change the lock to say open like so so now we can go ahead and save our changes in the knowledge the game to see what this looks like so now as we can see we have the handle image over here which is an image button and when we are hovering over it we get this blue outline or this blue glow to it and we have this little indicator light in the middle here and when we haven't entered in a combination yet it's just going to be showing black like this so now let's go ahead and try to enter in the wrong combination first and see what happens And as we could tell, we heard the error sound play there, telling us that we got the combination wrong. And we can also see that we have the red indicator light here on the handle. And now if we try to open up the door, we can hear the handle rattle sound, telling us that we can't open the door because it's locked. And then let's try to enter in the correct combination instead. And as we could hear there, we got the success sound to play. And we can also see that the indicator on the handle is glowing green instead of red. So now let's go ahead and try to open up the door. And as we could hear there, the open door sound played. And we can now see that we transitioned into the open safe screen instead. Then we have the book here in the middle. And when we hover over the book, we get this blue glow around it, indicating that we can click on it. So now we're almost done with this tutorial. There's only a few things left that we have to implement. So let's go back into the code and do that now. So now we're going to implement a way to reset the safe back to its initial values whenever the user is pressing on the reset button on the safe dial. And that is so that they can start over in case they accidentally chose a wrong value. And this reset functionality is also going to be used whenever we are entering into the safe puzzle screen. And that is just to make sure that every time the user is entering into a new save, any old values that the user has rotated to is going to be reset back to zero instead. So for that, we're going to go back up into the init Python block right here. And underneath these last lines of code, we're going to create this new function. So we're going to create a few empty lines and then go inwards three times. So one, two, three. And then we're going to say def reset save and then instead of here we're going to make a bunch of variables into globals so that we can change them so the first variable is going to be the dial number so we're going to say global dial number and then dial text so we're going to say global dial text and then we have global completed combination numbers and combination length and then combination check and dial start rotate like so so now we're going to set the dial number back to zero so we're going to say dial number is equal to zero and then dial text is equal to zero and then dial sprite dot rotate amount is equal to zero as well and then completed combination numbers should be equal to an empty dictionary like so and then we have combination length should be equal to zero and combination check should be equal to none and then dial start rotate is equal to false like so and now we also need to reset the actual dial sprite back to its initial rotation so for that we're going to need to create a new transform so we're going to say t is equal to transform and child is equal to dial image 
and then zoom is equal to 0 0.5 so that we get the correct size and then we're going to set this transform as a child to the dial sprite so we're going to say dial sprite dot set child and then we're going to pass in the transform as the parameter like so and now we also need to make sure that we are resetting the sprites position on the screen so for that we're going to say dial sprite dot x is equal to config dot screen with divided by 2 minus dial size and then we're going to grab the width of the dial so we're going to add a zero inside of these two brackets for the dial size tuple and then we're going to say divided by 2 and then we'll do the y-axis as well so we're going to duplicate this line and then we're going to change the x to say y and then screen width should say screen height and then we're going to grab the height instead of the width of the dial size so we're going to say one instead of that like so and now we just need to make sure that we are redrawing the sprite manager so that these changes are going to reflect in our game so we're going to say dial sprite manager dot redraw and then we're going to add a zero as the parameter to that function like so now these two calculations that we just created we have used once before when we first created the dial sprite and positioned it on the screen. So these two lines just make sure that the sprite is going to be completely centered on the screen. So now that we have done that, we're just going to make sure that we are calling this reset save function from within the save puzzle screen when the screen is first shown as well as when the user presses on the reset button. So let's go ahead and scroll back down into the save puzzle screen right here. And then at the very top here, we're going to create an on statement. So we're going to say on show and then action and the action is going to be a function call so we're going to say function and then reset save like so so now whenever this save puzzle screen is going to be shown then this function is going to run and reset the save and now we're also going to make sure that we are calling this function whenever the user is pressing on the reset button right here so instead of using the null action, we're going to say function and then reset save, like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see if this is going to work correctly. So now let's go ahead and first of all check if the reset button is going to work correctly. And for that we are first of all going to need to select a value on the dial, like so, and then we'll press the reset button. And as we can see, that did work indeed, as the dial was reset back to its original rotation, and the value on top of here is also reset back to its initial value. And then let's go ahead and try to leave the save puzzle screen and then come back to it to see if the value is going to be reset as well. So let's choose a value, like so, and then we'll go back, and then we'll enter into the save again. And as we can see, that did work indeed, as the dial is reset and the value here is reset as well. And that is actually going to be it for this tutorial series, as we have now completely finished what we have set out to do. So a big congratulations to those of you who have made it this far, and I hope that you found this series useful and educational. And if you do, I would very much appreciate if you press the like button and also leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of it. And for those of you who are patrons of mine in the supporter tier or higher, can go ahead and download the full finished script for this tutorial on my Patreon page, so make sure that you don't miss out on that. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.